Welcome back to Big Gold Belt Media. It is I, Damien G or Damien Gracia, whichever one you want to use. Find me on social media at Damien G Show across the board. I had the privilege and the honor of reviewing a film that was so powerful in the six and a half minutes this short film was that it left me speechless. It left me thinking a lot about innocence and loss of innocence. And it had me even now almost on the verge of tears because there was so much for someone like me uh, to, to connect to in this movie. And the film is called Letter to Rosie uh, by Matt Sanchez, who narrates the story. There's a lot of intersecting points for me within this movie. One, there's a couple of shots of New York City in which I am a born and raised New Yorker, now transplanted here in the DFW area, Dallas, Texas. Uh, there was a connection to the Bronx, which I have lived in in my life before over on Decatur Avenue. I know exactly where that is. So the film itself, and I'm not going to try to give too much away, but there's a message, a powerful message of silent suffering, waiting too long to tell people who you love, something of importance that has affected you for whatever reason. We have a lot of reasons in which we don't share our views with those that we love. We suffer in silence. And the first scene of the movie is... Matt essentially screaming in silence on a stage. Uh, and then the story picks up as he is an adopted son of a lesbian couple who he refers to as mama and mom, which I love. He refers to them as, as two queens uh, as he was adopted also with apparently his uh, adopted brother as well as sister. And they were living in Decatur Avenue in the Bronx. And he was talking about in this film about the joy and the pride he had of having two, as he puts it, two queens in his household that raised him. And right then and there, that's a powerful statement because in 2000, <laughs> when he was born in the Bronx, that's not something a lot of people would have admitted to even back in the 90s and 80s when I lived in the Bronx. So that was a powerful admission right there. Uh, as, as Matt is chronicalizing this letter to Rosie, uh, one of his moms who had passed away, and he's narrating this letter, which I took it as an internal monologue that just happens to be a letter. Uh, because it was a raw emotion of feelings, uh, expression of feelings. And during this, this six minute film, Matt's character, which is him, goes from screaming in silence to laying down on the asphalt of a basketball court as he's contemplating a lot of things in his life as he makes this movie, uh, as he makes this letter to Rosie in this internal monologue. And there are moments of this film where there is a silent remembrance of what was good during his childhood. He references almost the rhythm of the block, the simple joys of a fire hydrant in the summertime, friendly faces, familiar faces on the block that you've seen. Now, I, as someone who grew up in New York, I understand this exponentially to, to an oomph degree. I understand this because it made me realize all the people, remember all the people I hung out with when I was about 10 years old, 11 years old, my friends from back home, you know, I moved around a lot. So I had to make a lot of friends wherever we went. And a lot of those happy moments were playing in the park or on the block or getting wet in a fire hydrant. Now, these are things that a lot of people may not understand if you're not from New York City or New York in general, and you wouldn't understand the ramification or the connection to that, where Matt references the bongos, like he can hear the, the congos, the bongos, that there's, there's a rhythm to the block and everyone's neighborhood kind of has that. You know, I bounced around from the Bronx to the Lower East Side, to Queens, to Brooklyn, you know, and I remember my neighborhood on the Lower East Side where I spent 
a good part of my formative teenage years hearing that block, still feeling the energy of that block when we did things as children. And then the story takes a really drastic turn. Uh, there's a traumatic event. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to spoil what the traumatic event is. But Matt's story, his letter goes from remembrance and missing her and loving her to a feeling of abandonment, a feeling of being alone to deal with something that no seven-year-old should have to deal with by himself. Uh, he had never told anyone in his family, going back to the beginning when I mentioned silent suffering. In this part of the movie, I want to call it the second half, even though it's a short film, but the final three minutes of the movie is him remembering and telling Rosie what happened to him and how a part of him blames her and wonders, did she know about the traumatic event that happened to him? And at seven years old, this is something you can't really put into words as a seven-year-old. And now Matt making this film and saying this, this monologue letter to, to Rosie, his mom, it's powerful, but it's also sad. And it's also melancholy because there are moments where you can hear the voice change. The inflections change from pride to joy to sadness, to frustration, to confusion. And those were the things I was picking up. Uh, I, I can't speak for everybody else, but that was one, some of the things I was picking up as he's making these admissions. And there's also his own songs that he's rapping to in this film where it has a semblance of Dear Mama by Tupac, where he's rapping to Rosie, to Ma, about look where he is now, about how he grew up, about what she taught him, like life lessons that she had taught him. And it culminates at the end, and I, I'm, I'm kind of wiping my eye now because I'm starting to tear up. It comes to the end of him saying, I forgive you. And we see in the film, there's shots of, you know, not just him laying on the basketball court, him on a stage, what looks to be a performance stage, him having an intimate moment with his other mom uh, and, and embracing. And then almost at the end, where there's this coming out of the darkness moment where he is enveloped by family and love. And, and that's one of the messages I got from this short film is, this is a story about love, remembrance on two sides of a coin, the good remembrance and the bad remembrance, and then having the strength to admit to what happened because he suffered in silence, because Matt suffered in silence. And the way this movie ends, it, it ends with him ending the letter to Rosie saying, look at me now, look at where I'm at, look at where I've become and overcome. And there's a semblance of joy uh, as he celebrates what seems to be family members or friends uh, in the closing shots of this movie. And watch it. I encourage everyone to watch this. This is a Cash production, K-A-S-H production. Uh, Matt Sanchez, Letter to Rosie uh, for Tribeca Film Festival. And powerful. It's powerful, and I, I implore you to get a chance, if you get a chance to watch this, please do, and share what your thoughts of this movie were in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts were. I can talk about mine and how I, I can relate to this movie on so many levels and what Matt was saying. Uh, I don't want to talk about my own life, but let's just say there's a lot of parallels with what he was talking about as to what I experienced as well. Uh, again, the film is, is Letters to Rosie by Matt Sanchez. It is a cash production here for Tribeca Film Festival. Please watch this. And let me know what you think down in the comments below. Here at Big Gold Belt Media, I am Damian Gracia or Damian G, whichever one you want to use. Follow me on your social media platforms at Damian G Show and BigGoldBelt.com. And I will see you next time for another film review. Thanks and have a good one.